All right, so first I'd like to start by welcoming Secretary Nag with us today. This is a great opportunity and, and an honor to be a part of, of this discussion. You know, as, as you know, Secretary, our farmer owners here at Landis have been through a lot the last several uh, months. Mm -hmm. Truly, I don't need to tell you that. You're living it right alongside of us. From the standpoint of, of many factors, which first is how do they protect themselves and stay healthy with rural mm -hmm. communities, rural health care. But then you have the whole e economics that's playing out here and the challenges that, that exist from the whole ag economy, whether it's corn and soy, the whole livestock piece. Everything's kind of coming in at, at one time. So it's nice to have the opportunity that we did just a few minutes ago to advocate a little bit, but then to also show a little bit of, of the side of this discussion that we have around uh, the advocacy and how we do that. So first, I want to say thanks to you for the support that you continue to give our farmers and, and the whole agribusiness sector here in Iowa. It's been great to, to, to be a part of that journey with you. So I'll turn it over to you for some comments. Well, Matt, thanks. And uh, good to talk with you again here. And, and you know, uh, and thanks. Your team has been good uh, all throughout this spring. I've had regular updates. In fact, I'm frequently calling and saying, how, where, how do things stand? What do things look like from your perspective? And that's really helpful for me. I do that. I talk to folks all across the state and especially as we went through uh, the early stages of COVID-19. Of course, one of the things we were constantly continue to do this too is to assess the supply chain. And I've been saying all along that supply chain, that food and agriculture supply chain that we all know starts on a farm somewhere and ends up on a grocery store shelf or being served as food. We know that that uh, includes input suppliers and all of the things that it takes for that farmer to put a crop in the ground and uh, to care for the livestock that they, uh, they do. And so that's an that's a important supply chain that's got to move. And so we've been really watching that from uh, you know, feed, seed, fertilizer, fuel, uh, you name it. And, uh, and so that's been important. And, and one of the things that we had talked about early on with really everybody throughout that supply chain is, hey, we need to be proactive in, uh, in moving things to the front line in really trying to protect workers and protect each other, take care of our health and uh, be ready to put a crop in the ground. And uh, we know that, my goodness, haven't we had a, a fast start to spring, a historic progress. Of course, we got, with that historic progress, we got a little bit of a, a, a chance for that late frost that, that nipped a few folks, and we'll be having to assess that. But uh, what an amazing window that we've had the last couple of weeks, and, and boy, near ideal conditions. Uh, all across the state. So I guess generally, Matt, what, how, look across the land is, you know, system and tell me how, how has spring gone for you all? Well, Secretary, I think in our 23 counties, it, it couldn't have went better if, if we tried. You know, there's, there's glitches and, and things that always occur and some, some delayed planning up north to, to mm -hmm. some of that even down south. But by and large, it was an amazing, very compacted spring as you're yeah. you know, it went well, and you know I appreciate all the support you've given. But I want to also thank our employees for for hanging in there through COVID as essential workers and and being on the front lines and keeping our farmers and themselves safe too, because that was a big part of the journey. And our farmer owners hung in there with them, and, and it was a great spring, giving the compactness of it. Uh, it didn't give us a lot of room for error, and 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 as we talked about a few minutes ago off uh, camera here that. Ag is resilient in Iowa, and yeah. that, that's what makes us such a, a great industry in this state for sure. You know, we, uh, we started early on, and I, I had a conversation with Governor Reynolds very early in this, and you know, we talked, and she was always on board with the concept of food and agriculture, essential service, critical infrastructure, must have it. And, uh, you know, she has been supportive all the way along to make sure that, again, things, uh, that things continue to move. And uh, so, yeah, we, we appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I think you mentioned, too, something that I think is worth, it's important to note. And that's this concept of, you know, your, your workforce and, and the farmers out there who uh, have, we all have had to take extraordinary measures to protect ourselves and protect each other. And that's hard to do. I just did a, a visit today uh, uh, to, we received some donated face masks from a sister state organization in, in Taiwan. And so I went and you know, it's hard for us to not shake hands and not, uh, you know, do the things that we all like to, to do and, and, and see each other up close and personal. And, and I know that's been hard for folks to adjust to, not to have some, wave somebody into the cab of the tractor and have them sit with you and do a few rounds. And, you know, there's been some, I think, some pretty clever things about what's the, what's the proper social distancing. Maybe it's the length of a dairy cow or it's, uh, 
two pigs. Uh, I tend to think it's across the hood of a pickup is a nice social distance. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, those have been hard for people because it's, it is changing our lives and it's changing the way we do things. But we've got to take those things uh, very seriously. Yeah, we do. And, and I was really proud of our employees and our farmer owners both, you know, having to adjust right before spring season that was as, as compacted and, and hectic as it was to adopt some things that they hadn't done from social yeah. distancing to contactless deliveries to using our app more, our customer portal. I mean, mm -hmm. the list goes on and on. And, and again, Ag was resilient and I, I couldn't uh, to be more honored to, today to represent those, those farmer owners and employees to you on, on the great job they did for, for all of us in agriculture here in, in this great state. Well, good. Well, uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're going to continue to, to work uh, to support uh, Iowa agriculture. And, you know, as we talked about, uh, it's, it's impacting everybody across the, the whole, every sector of agriculture. But uh, one, one group in particular that's really being heavily impacted, of course, is our livestock producers. And, you know, we've got both a market disruption in the terms of, you know, things that originally were headed for a food service destination now or where we've seen a dramatic increase in the grocery uh, demand. And so some of those things don't automatically make it over to the other channels. So we think about things like our liquid egg, 70% of the eggs that are produced in Iowa go into an egg product as opposed to shell eggs. And so, boy, you just can't get that over to the grocery store shelf automatically. Think of all the milk that would normally go to school lunch and, uh, and how that disruption has occurred. And it's really impacted all across Turkey as well. And then we've got this processing disruption that's impacting, uh, you know, our, our pork producers and our cattlemen in particular. And so we're just really trying to continue to work through that. So one, uh, uh, you know, advocating for, we believe that USDA, what they've rolled out or what we expect them to roll out here in the next, you know, couple of weeks here, hopefully by the end of, of May, that we start to see some direct payments to producers to help folks get through this challenging time. The second part of that is purchasing programs. And so again, you've got surplus product that's out there. Uh, it's a, I think it's a good opportunity for USDA to buy. I think the number I just saw here recently was by the end of this calendar year, USDA will have purchased a, around $5 billion worth of US food and agriculture products. And that'll help uh, those supply chains as well. And it goes to a good, a, a, some, a need that's growing out there and that's food insecure Americans. So food banks and food pantries. And so, I also want to bring up then uh, something that we've we've done here in Iowa, uh, past the pork uh, program, and we have to remember it's got its origins in something that's not so good, which is we've got this excess supply of animals on the farm that we can't get through processing, and we're trying to meet that need of food insecure Iowans. But I also can't think of a more Iowa thing to do than to be able to try to connect those dots. And so we've got pork producers that even though they're having economic challenges and they're really struggling to figure out what to do with their animals uh, they still are trying to recognize and be, be uh, make sure that animal is going to some good use and so they're willing to donate uh, hogs and then what we've done together with the Iowa Pork Producers Association is identify some of our smaller uh, meat processors and meat lockers out across the state that that have some ability to run a few more animals through and then we're able to uh, to donate that pork ultimately to food banks and food pantries. And so one of the things we have been asked a lot about is uh, how are we finding this capacity across the state? Because uh, I suspect some folks that might be watching this are saying, hey, uh, my meat locker is booked out several <laughs> months. And, and that's true. And you know what? We think that's, I'm glad for them because I want them to be really busy. And maybe that's something that comes out of this is that people make more use of those, those local meat lockers. But we have found several locations that are willing to add hours and add capacity to process these donated pigs. We wanted to make sure that they didn't disrupt their normal customer base. And so uh, we really have had some great partners. We're also on, as the department, we, uh, we're providing some additional inspection services to those meat lockers at no charge so that they can do that additional processing. So I, I just want to thank Landis, the Landis family, uh, for, for making a donation and being a part of that. We've, uh, we've raised together a, a right over uh, just over a hundred thousand dollars for this effort and i uh, just i couldn't be more proud of all the partners that have engaged here and thank you for helping because it's it's helping our producers it's uh and it's helping food insecure iowans and and that's not a need that's going to go away in the next couple of months either so uh, this will be something that will uh, this will benefit folks for uh, for months to come 
Well, thank you, Secretary, for, for developing a program like this and tying it so closely to many different aspects of agriculture uh, is, is really what this touches as you're siding from the meat lockers all the way through to livestock producers. All of us at Atlantis and, and our partners at Land Lakes that also help contribute. It's a big part of, of what we should do. And I can tell you that this is what Landis is about and rising up. And that's the cooperative model to, to help really drive in times like these. So um, we're glad there was an effort like this and all of us included at Landis and Land Lakes were happy to be a part of it. And, and thanks for what you're all doing. And then thanks for explaining, because I do get that question quite often. How does this work exactly? Because I can, I'm struggling. Yeah. And it was good to have you explain that because I know that that's on some of their minds too. Well, thank you again. Let's stay in touch. And uh, again, to everyone, uh, everyone who's watching this, uh, you know, take, take care of yourselves, take care of your families. And, uh, you know, we've got a little bit of a spring yet, yet spring planning yet to get uh, through here, but uh, stay safe out there. Thanks, Secretary. You do the same and keep advocating for agriculture. We appreciate what you're doing. Will do.